Yo! What up, y'all? Welcome back to another one. If you're new here, yes, I start most of the videos out with a big enthusiastic yo! The louder it is, the better it is, the better the video is gonna be. That's just how it goes. But uh, welcome back, and if you're new, go ahead and smash that subscribe button. Uh, this is part of Foul Fridays. And these videos, um, I'm just giving my two cents to you guys. There's a lot of beginner duck hunters uh, hitting the scene, hitting the fields, hitting the water, hitting the public lands, hitting the lakes, hitting the rivers, whatever. My name is Bobby Guy. I own Sandhill Flyaways. Very proud of my lodge that I built. If you were not here, we built the lodge here on the channel and we provide duck hunts and uh, we're a guide service here in central Kansas. Our hunting here is phenomenal, but one thing I've learned, uh, especially over the last two years, but my 18, 20 years of duck hunting in general is ethics, 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 ethics. And there's, um, there's a lot of different varieties of ethics to consider and to follow and to abide by in waterfowl, okay? Waterfowl hunting, duck hunting, goose hunting. Yes, a lot of the things that I'm going to talk about go hand in hand with deer hunting, turkey hunting, dove hunting, anything. But for the most part, this is going to be over duck and goose hunting in general. Honestly, the Foul Fridays, some of them don't get the best views, but honestly, I don't care. You want to know why? Because, believe me, I've looked, I've checked around, I've kept my eyes open the last little while, long while, basically, what I'm getting to, the history of the YouTube channel doing well. Uh, duck hunting, goose hunting related. There's not a lot of companies, influencers, anything out there that are talking about gun safety, hunting safety, ethics, teaching you something you may not know, uh, something that you obviously need to know. That's why I'm here. And that is what this video is all about. All right. <laughs> Got the AC turned on in the lodge. Old Bradley from Ducks, y'all have met him on a lot of videos. He'll be here in a little bit. Uh, but off season here in the lodge, uh, I love this place. I love being in here. I haven't been in here for a while and it's so clean. No one's been in here, no one's bothered it. Um, everything's really kept very nicely. Uh, big thank you to um, Beth's mom for keeping this place absolutely gorgeous all the time. So, so hunting ethics. Um, Number one, duck hunting related. Um, number one that I think, uh, it's gonna be like three things in one. So I don't have a script. I didn't write any of these things down. So I'm just gonna run through them um, as they come. Uh, number one to me though, uh, other than gun safety and the obvious things, right? Um, hunting ethics. What we are supposed to do first and foremost um, as duck and goose hunters, um, dispatching birds. Guys, I know I've, I've mentioned this before and a lot of you have sent me DMs and stuff, you know, on TikTok and, and sharing things that you guys don't agree with as well. And what I'm talking about is younger folks, any age, uh, that may have a wounded bird, duck or goose that isn't dead and it's just wounded. They picked it up. Now they have it alive in the blind or it is dead and they're making it talk or just handling birds with disrespect. That's number one, guys. Um, if you go out there and the bird's flopping, you need to wring its neck. Wring its neck until the neck breaks. I know that sounds bad, but that is your duty now as a duck and goose hunter is to dispatch that animal. If you want to mount the bird and you don't want to, you know, kink the neck all up and maybe pop the head off or something for, if you get too crazy with it, um, they, they have tools for that, that dispatch the animal. So I think that's number one, no playing with any type of game, no matter if it's a deer, a duck, a squirrel, a rabbit, anything out there, do not play with it. Do not make it a mockery, right? Don't make a mockery of the animal, please. That's our number one. That is the first thing that makes us as hunters, um, makes us look just absolutely despicable. And, and I hate it. I hate seeing that sh sh stuff gets me worked up. I can't, I just don't understand why some people do the stuff they do. Number two, um, as a duck and goose hunter, please understand that the birds that you are taking, ducks and geese, are 
federal, federally maintained birds, okay? Federally regulated, federally maintained. Um, so you need to know your seasons, what's open, what isn't, and how many of what you can shoot during that time of the season, okay? That's a huge, huge ethic thing for me. Know your seasons. Um, if you think you know, but you're not 100% sure, go online. You have a phone in your pocket. Pull it out. Go online. Whatever state you have, go on there and look at the duck open dates. Go through the list. Double check. Um, that goes, uh, again, that goes hand in hand with knowing how much of what you can shoot what time of year. Okay. Number three. <sighs> Number three. I would say... Um, man, it's a, it's a toss up. I have two things that should make number three, but one has to be number four. <laughs> uh, number three for me is going to be respect the farmer. Make sure that you get permission to hunt the ground that you want to hunt or that you're going to hunt. Okay. So permission, do not rut up the field. Make sure that you can, if you want to drive a truck in that you have permission to do so. Okay. These are all things. These five things that we're getting at here are all things that will either get you in trouble if you do not do them correctly, or it's going to make you look bad, or it's going to, something bad is going to happen. You're going to leave a bad taste in that farmer's mouth. So when I come to ask to hunt, he's like, nope, I don't let anybody hunt because I had this dude two years ago who absolutely got stuck out here. He rutted up my whole field. Can't do that. Okay. Every farmer has a story about a bad story, unfortunately, about what someone did to him. And we're idiots, okay? So don't be an idiot. I think that's the number one thing, right? Don't be an idiot. Think ahead. Think ahead. You have to think ahead. If it rained, okay? If it rained, you already have permission to hunt. And then it rains. And it's sloppy. And he said you could drive your truck in when it was dry, but now it rained. Don't. Don't. You're gonna have to carry it in. You're gonna have to go get a quad and hug the edge, something, okay? You need to get back a hold of them. Don't call them at 10 at night. <laughs> Be respectful of the farmer again. Uh, number four, this was one that um, has really bothered me and me and my dad have been magnet fishing, um, you know, for the past two, three years. And I seen it really bad in fields, but then I seen it really bad when I started public land hunting a lot more here on the channel, solo duck hunts or whatever me and Fred would go do, teal hunting, public spots, and the empty shells and the trash. Guys, I know we all go to the convenience store in the morning uh, before the hunts at 4.30 a.m., 5 a.m., whatever it might be, 3.30 a.m., and we get monster and water and energy drinks galore and candy and, and snacks and beef jerky, whatever, right? Chips, pretzels. Uh, you have to take that trash with you. Do not leave it there. There has been so many times on public land where there's still, there's like three monster cans, you know, or like a Red Bull or a Snickers wrapper. And I'm like, golly. Uh, and then that goes to say, the, the amount of empty holes, the empty shotgun shells out there, bad, really bad. Pick them up, pick them up. I don't care if it's public land or private, pick up your stuff. You have to leave it better than when you found it. That's number four. And that should be number one. But I really, number one was dispatching birds and not hand, and handling them properly. So uh, number five. I don't have something right off the top. You gotta let me think here for a minute. Number five, ethics. What's the big thing? What's the big thing? Number five, what I'm not thinking about, something else that I've just not thought of. I think there's, there's a couple things. Um, obviously, again, gun safety, guys. Um, I think one thing, you know, uh, you know, number five, man, this should be up there. This is making me really think of something that um, needs to be spoken on and I guarantee it happens more than a lot of us know or see or maybe maybe some of you do <clears throat> see it more than others unfortunately um, if you're <clears throat> if you're ever duck or goose hunting or hunting of any sorts 
deer hunting. And you're hunting with somebody that likes to do illegal crap. Don't be there. Leave. You don't have to be there. And what I mean is, like, I think the thing that I'm getting at is, like, shooting over limits. Shooting out of season. Um, um, what are some other things? Like, shooting random birds that fly over. I've seen it long, long years ago. Uh, people shoot at random blackbirds or something, you know, thinking that's a starling. And they don't actually know what they're shooting at. <clears throat> and when they shoot, you know, somebody, usually me, I I always pipe up. I'm like, do you know what that was? They're like, blackbird. And I'm like, yeah, you can't shoot at those birds. I've said it before. I remember back in the day, uh, before the guide service, before YouTube, just being young. Yeah, you can't shoot those, you know, like you can't just go shoot any, well, there's millions of those black things. You don't know exactly what bird it is. So what I'm getting at, you don't shoot at random stuff, that, especially if you don't know what species it is. Okay, bird identification. Know what's in season. That's what you're allowed to shoot. That's how many you're allowed to shoot. Whatever your law states, all right? Um... As hunters, it's up to us to keep hunting going. As hunters, it's up to us to give a good face to hunting, to allow us to continue hunting. Because, like it or not, uh, having public land that we pay for, yeah, I'm, I'm right here with you, with our tax dollars, it can go away. All that stuff can go away. Hunting rights can go away. All that stuff with a click of a button, per se, right? It all can go away. So just appreciate it while we have it. Um, and let's not give it a, a bad face. You know, I, I think that social media, I love social media. It's made a life for me, obviously. Um, but one thing is with social media, if you're young, and I'm talking to you young guys, unfortunately, but a lot of you need to hear it. If you're young and someone's in the blind doing dumb shit, and I mean it, just doing dumb stuff with their phone, you know, handling a bird, or it's not dead. Put if you if you see anything on social media, go message them and tell them to take it down. Don't cuss them out. But even your your buddies in the blind, you don't want to be around people doing a, stupid stuff like that. So, be the big man, set the example, tell them that is not all right. I'm not going to be here unless you don't do that. Da da da. Whatever you want to do, but spread the good word. We need good guys in the blind like me and you watching, uh, spreading the good word and not afraid to open their mouth and tell the guys, hey, I know you think you're cool or whatever, big billy goat guy, you big tough guy, but you can't do that here. I do not condone that. That is not legal and that's not how I hunt. Um, but social media has kind of made, made it bad for us folks out here that um, take hunting seriously and know how how much it's actually treading on thin ice right now you know it is it is our country is is kind of going this way away away from any hunting especially big media but we're not going to get into that thank you for your time i hope i gave you some good info if you're interested in booking here at sandhill flyways you know what to do go down in the description uh the link that says hunt with me sandhill flyways um, there will be an inquire to book form. Fill that out and yours truly will be giving you a call. Make sure that you put the correct phone number on those forms because I've tried to call several of them and it's not the right phone number. Please, serious inquires only. If this is the first time seeing the lodge, yes, it's gorgeous. I absolutely adore it so much. This is the map. If, I'm sure a lot of you have seen it. I know, I know. But this is where a lot of you come from, from across the nation. Thank you all for being here. I'm not going to take up any more of your time. Maybe we need to do more videos like this. Let me know. But until next time.